the Carter family, old A.P. Carter from Virginia and his daughter Maybelle and his sister Sarah. And uh, way back around the early 1930s, you could have heard their records on all kinds of country music programs around this country, north and south. And me, I was just one of millions that thought it was the most wonderful music I heard. Well, I sing it by way of introducing the person who's going to be on our program. This Rainbow Quest today has come around. We're very fortunate to have Mother Bay Bell's daughter, June, June Carter. She's traveling through town, and she said she'd like to drop over and sing a few songs with us. And with her is another fellow. Johnny Cash. And uh, speaking of Grandma Carter, Pete, you were talking about the Carter family a minute ago, and uh, I, I'm afraid you're just a little bit confused about something. Do you mind if I tell you the whole Please story? Please set me straight. All right. Well, there was the old original Carter family, A.P., Sarah, and Maybell, that you know, but you've got their uh, their relationships mixed up a well, bit. Wasn't Maybell uh, A.P.'s daughter? No, uh, she was A.P.'s sister-in-law. She's my daddy's uh. Uh, wife, and he was A.P.'s brother, and Aunt Sarah was not his sister, but his wife. And she and mother were first cousins, so that makes you your own grandpa. <laughs> oh, hey. One thing here, June. All uh, right. Aunt Sarah Carter is coming to Nashville. She's there today. She arrived today for the first time in 20 years, I suppose. Sarah Carter is going to record with mm -hmm. Maybell. The mm -hmm. two of them, just the two of them. And this should be a real collector's item. She sings great. Well, this is the first time that Mother and Aunt Sarah, they cut their last recording in 1941. And you see, AP's been dead quite a while. But, 25. Uh, uh, well, I said, I mean, the last recording, yeah. excuse me. He's been gone quite a while, and that's all of the old original sound that's left, Mother and Aunt Sarah. And we're real happy about it. Um, she. She just didn't have anything to do with the music business. She really didn't care, you know, too much. Except we got to send in her tapes talking to her. And she got to send in us tapes uh, of her, uh, uh, of songs that she had sung. And she has the greatest voice, Pete. It's just as strong and as Better vibrant as it can be. Better. And uh, she sent cold chills all over us with those old tapes that she sent. So John and Mommy and Daddy and the girls and I sent her a tape and begged her to come, and so she's coming. Oh, wonderful. And we're just thrilled to death about it. It'll be, a, a real, I think, a real collector's item. Uh, Sarah and Mabel mm -hmm. Carter uh, singing the old song, their style. Nobody else in the background, you know. Pure, she is pure as a driven snow, her voice is anyway. I don't know much about her background. June probably does. <laughs> but she is a great lady and a fabulous, she got a fabulous voice. My favorite is Keep on the Sunny Side. June and Marshall Grant, my bass player, and I do this on stage sometime. Keep on the sunny side. Always on the sunny, sunny side. side. I'll tell you a, a real, real quickly a story uh, why this song impressed me so. June asked me to go up to see her old home place up at Macy Springs, Virginia. You know where that is, of course. Macy Springs. That's near Hilton's. Uh, anyway, at... Uh, uh, What's the name of the cemetery? Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon Cemetery. We drove up this wine and gravel road, and uh, the tall pines all the way around, and there was one little spot of sunlight way down at the end, and the sun was shining on a rose marble monument. Well, we walked right straight to it, and the writing was on the other side. And I said, that's it, June. She had never seen it either. She'd heard about it. She knew about it. I walked around, and uh, right where the sun was streaming down uh, on this rose marble, the, the word said A.P. Carter, and a gold record under that, and under that, keep on the sunny side. Oh, great. And he was on the sunny side. They buried him where the sun would shine on him. It seemed uh, more hours of the day than... Yeah, anywhere else. Did you ever know him, Pete? No. Just heard his records, that's all. Uh-huh. Well, you know, uh, would you let me tell you a little something about yeah, him? Please. I will, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, well, my Uncle A.P. Carter, of course, that's my daddy's brother. He was a he was a tall man. He was about six, two and a half, six, three, something like that. He was quite tall, and he was quite handsome when he was young. Dark and... Uh, 
I mean, you know, darker hair, <coughs> and some of the people may have seen his pictures, I don't know, but he walked uh, like a giant. I don't know how to explain to justify that other than the fact that when he walked onto a stage years and years ago, the old Carter family did concerts without even realizing that they did. He walked out on that stage and there was something about that man that just demanded attention and got it. He, he, he stood and Mother and Aunt Sarah used to sit down with their guitars and they, the old lamps would be lined across the front of the stage. No microphone. No mics at all. But he would tell a story about the songs, where he got it, where it came from, if they wrote it, or where he got the song, and um, uh, how come them to do the song. And uh, so many of the particular songs they did, like the Cyclone of Rykov, which was written about the, the, the disaster at the Rykov schoolhouse, he told why and where it came from, the fate of Dewey Lee, so many of those old ones. But the songs from the uh, Spanish-American War and things like that, he would just say he got this down on the river at old such and such his house, but where it came from, you know. And um, there was just something about the man that made him great. And Mother and Aunt Sarah had the same thing. I don't know what it was. But it, it, it just demanded respect, they got it. And the, the country people used to come and listen to them. And I remember one story that was told from, by Mr. J.L. Franks, who used to do all of the shows from out of the Grand Ole Opry. He said, without the Carter family, we might have gone under. He said, now this is years ago, you know. He said that when Pee Wee King and Eddie Arnold and all of them, many Pearl, started from the Grand Ole Opry, they'd play tours. And he said, we, we'd go out and we'd do enough to barely get by and then we'd be starving. And then he'd say, I'll have to see if I can just get a hold of A.P. Carter. <laughs> and he said they'd call somebody at Hilton's and somebody would go up the valley and they'd leave that mountain there and come out. And he said then we'd have a whole week of good dates if we could just get to Carter family. <laughs> and so that's the way it was oh. back then. But he was quite a man.